If you're a fan of TRPGs or tactical role-playing games, you might expect to like this game. But speaking from personal experience, as someone who has played other TRPGs like Disgaea, Super Robot Wars, Fire Emblem, Phantom of the Kill, and the Alchemist Code, while this game feels more authentic than the latter two Escacha games, evoking a sense of nostalgia for fans of the genre, the super aggressive monetization this app throws at you shatters the rose tinted glasses. Much like how Ragnarok Online was relegated to mobile hell, to a lesser extent, concepts that are familiar are dressed in a modern shell, with all the good and the bad. That's not to say this game is bad, no, on the contrary, this system is the closest to a classic TRPG that exists in the mobile game. But before I can explain why I feel conflicted for this game, I need to explain the game systems, and for that, we need to start with the story. You awaken with a start, and as you try to get your bearings, you realize you're imprisoned. As you try to recall what happened, you find that you have also lost your memories. The jailers bring a bunch of other civilians, and after some suspicious dialogue, begins killing the prisoners. Just before your turn comes, a strong female warrior, whom I refer to as Geraltina since the moment I saw her I thought, Witcher, bursts into the dungeon, saving you from certain death. Two others join up as they review themselves to be allies and explain the situation. Together, you attempt to make an escape, but not before you get caught by the kingdom's forces. Tragedy strikes as Geraltina takes on their forces without proper preparation and dies a volley of arrows. You and the remaining members attempt to flee, but you find yourself trapped at the kingdom gates, sandwiched between two hostile forces, thirsting for blood. Alas, while you were lucky enough to be rescued from prison, it seems there was just too much. Or is it? From here on, the game finally starts, and you find yourself in a mystical realm. A talking cat explains that you are rescued once again, and after some exposition and tutorials, the Spiral of Destiny mode is revealed to you. But what is it though? A name like that hardly explains anything, but the gist of it is a single player mode focused on the alternate universe where the scenario I just described did not happen. Where you and your friends successfully escaped due to your future self's intervention and you join the namesake guild, the Sword of Convalaria. It is also what makes this game stand out. The story mode in the gacha portion runs separately from the Spiral of Destiny and continues on, with a completely different set of problems to face with your MC that met the talking cat. It has no link to the gacha portion of Sword of Convalaria, and all your gacha units are not available for use. The only units you can use are the ones you retain throughout the alternate timeline. In this mode, no predatory system exists, no stamina, no gacha rolling, no dailies and resource dungeons. It's basically what sort of convalaria would have been without any of its modern trappings. I'll briefly explain how SOD plays. It follows a time system, kind of like Persona. Each week, you're given an opportunity to do a quest or to send a dispatch with your spare units. The quests give different rewards based on type and difficulty, and also have a specified duration. Mandatory critical quests that pushes the story forward also appear occasionally as you play. Each activity you do reduces the character's stamina by a specified amount. Normal quests reduce the stamina by 10%. Dispatches reduce the stamina by 20%, and if a character dies during a quest, their stamina is reduced by 40%. Due to this, keeping your units alive is a good habit to keep. When their stamina drops to zero, you will be unable to use them in stages. You can heal fatigue units by utilizing the rest system, which recovers 50% of their stamina but puts them out of commission for one week. Not using the unit for any activities restores stamina by 10%. Before and after you engage in quests, along with resting, you can perform a number of other features such as recruiting units from the tavern, 
training units to gain levels, skills, and passives. Watch equipment from resources you gathered. And managing your tactical skills. All these systems come together to form a relatively simple resource management TRPG that's easy to play. This system, according to developer Axie Games, has 120 hours of content along with multiple routes, as you can see here. The path branches out, and based on your choices and allegiances, you will get different results leading to different endings, supposedly. All that I have just described to you is one game mode that exists in this game. Honestly, it's pretty wild that they handled the game like this. They could have released an indie title like this, and I think it would have been decently well received, but no. It, it's like just one portion, two different games, kind of mushed into one, like some unholy fusion. But oh well, now that we've covered the nice parts of the game, we'll move on to the... Uh, the modern parts of the game. Two clicks away from the homely indie section is a site all too familiar with anyone who has played gacha games. This has it all. The ravenous stamina system, the uninspiring stage progression page, the aggressive monetization, and I do mean aggressive, like two battle passes, a skin gacha, launch packages and monthly subscriptions that provide gameplay benefits on day one type of aggressive. I've never seen a game throw this many packages at launch. As I tend to experience, the early days of a game tend to be the mildest level of monetization a mobile game will offer. I've yet to play a game that actually tones its monetization down in future updates just because they feel it's too much. Based on that, if day one, and I repeat, the first day this game is officially released looks like this, I don't want to know how bad it'll look a year after. This game implements a VIP system, I'll lose my fucking ball. <sighs> but thankfully, all of this doesn't affect the single player aspect in the slightest, for now. But you can't help but feel this was tacked on just leech money of gacha addicts. Despite the gorgeous 2.5D pixel graphics, nostalgic battle systems, and great voice acting, soundtrack and artwork, I think the experience gets brought down by modern gacha systems. Stages consume copious amounts of stamina and you have some quality of life stuff that are not explained. And by copious, I mean like, you recover one stamina in 4 minutes and each story stage takes up 30 stamina. The uh, resource dungeons consume 20 to 40 stamina per stage and the recovery like from leveling up is only 20 stamina so not even enough to cover the cost of the story that's like insane and of course what do you know you can buy stamina in this game so i wonder why they consume so much stamina and why it takes so long to replenish hmm i wonder <laughs> doesn't take a genius to figure out but what can you do Although some might say, oh, Empia, you could just play the Spyro of Destiny thing. You just said it was like unlimited stamina, but it's like, then if they had that system in the first place, why do they need to include all of that other nonsense in this game? Right? If not for the money. Kind of makes sense, right? You, the worst part is that they've already given a preview of what this game could be. Still, still, they do this. So it makes it like kind of worse. But as for what the quality of life stuff that are not explained I'm complaining about, for example, if you do the Voyage Memento achievement quest, when you complete the green develop part, the blue tab is automatically completed. This is not clearly indicated and something this significant should be included in a pop-up, especially given the little stamina we have, so you don't end up wasting your stamina during any of the blue stages, provided you have enough levels to straight away complete the green stage. Another issue is that the pity banner rolls don't seem to carry over. Given how much this game likes modern systems, I would expect them to at least include some modern pity systems, such as the pity carrying over the next banner, to at least kind of correct the previous, even more predatory gacha systems. But 
for now, this since this is the first banner, we'll see. But from what I read in this screen, it doesn't seem like it carries over. Overall, I'd say the game is at least worth a try. Not everyone will like it, and if you're a fan of TRPGs, I still say to give it a shot. As a side game you can play on the go without much commitment, just as long as you're not the type to be caught by multiple net sort of convalaria throws at your wallet, because as I just shown you, the amount of monetization that they do is insane. Like day one, day one, not even second anniversary games that I'm playing, at this level of monetization. <laughs> like, like it's it's mind blowing how bad it is. <laughs> like, if they implement a VIP system, I'm gonna make a video on that, and that will be the end of my journey. Like, here. For now, I'm still F2P. I'm saving all my gems and all my rolls, just in case I see a character and a banner that I really, really want. Honestly, this banner is kind of tempting, but if I do roll i will probably stream it so yeah anyway if you like videos like this then do feel free to leave a comment down below leave me a like and subscribe i have a second channel that i'm planning to dedicate to game videos like this one but for now since i'm doing it quite infrequently i'm probably just uploading this to the main channel and we'll see how it does but yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you all next time bye